we got a little bit ahead of schedule, so I'm going to, before we have our break, we have time for Joy and, Joy and Des, who are going to speak afterwards. But I don't know how many of you are aware of therapeutic parenting. My husband and I took some classes through Heather Forbes, and I actually was online with her about a year or so ago. And what she teaches is that when a child is melting down and they're freaking out, that there's something underneath that. There's fear, and you have to get to the bottom of that. There's, it's trauma-based. And it's absolutely amazing. And what they have done is they actually have adopted and they had some children that had some special issues work through a lot with their family. And now they teach classes and help other families. And they're just absolutely amazing. It's a wonderful approach. And I'm so excited to have them here today. So Joy and Des, please join us. You guys are a little intimidating. We're not professionals, we're not therapists, we're not doctors, we're parents. Um, we've been doing this for 15 years and we're still surviving, although there was a time when we truly wondered if we would. Um, my husband's here with me today. I started out doing a lot of the training and learning more about the Beyond Consequences method and the new paradigm of parenting. Came quickly to our realization that you needed a partner. You need somebody to be with there with you. You cannot raise children of trauma, of developmental trauma, on your own. You need a support group. And um, as we started teaching the classes, we knew that a lot of moms were signing up. But we needed the dads to sign up. We needed a support person to sign up. And so Des started attending the classes with me and started working with them. And he provides that dad piece, because dads, you're just as important as the moms. And we know you're just as depleted often as we are, and what it really takes to keep going. So if you want to, this is our family. We have an adorable adopted family of three children um, born in the Marshall Islands. We adopted them later in our lives. We adopted them later in their lives. They were 11, 8, and 4. We knew we were going to have problems. We had been counseled that we would have problems. We understood that they were living with their birth family. They had five older siblings living in the home with them. We thought it wouldn't be so bad. <laughs> it was. <laughs> but this is what everybody saw, our happy little family. And this is what we presented to the world. Our children knew happiness. They knew how to smile. They knew how to please. They knew how to um, react to strangers. They knew how to survive. But what they didn't know how to do was deal with any other emotion. This, the next slide, behind the doors, is what we were really dealing with. It's who we really were. We dealt with lying, stealing, aggression, major violence, police, um, at the time, the police knew that if we called, they needed to come. We dealt with psychiatric hospitals, medications, um, arrest. It's never fun to have your child at the age of 14 handcuffed in your home and removed by the police. It's just not a fun experience. But when the aggression gets that bad and your child is escalating and everybody's safety is in question, you do what you have to do to keep everybody safe. Um, we dealt with a lot of mood disorders. We dealt with a lot of um, uh, violence and aggression, defiance, control issues. If there's not a parent here who has any of these situations that, what's one of the first things we usually hear from a parent? Wow, my child has so much control issues. They need to be in control. You bet they do because they've experienced trauma. And they've learned that the only way to be in control of themselves is to be in control of them and not let you do it. Because typically, if they've come from an orphanage or from a foster care system, or even in our case, from a family that was abusive, they have learned not to depend on the adults in their life. I'm sure they're just acting like normal children. It's, it's, you know, it's just typical for their age to do this. No, not when it's an intensity level that other people with neurotypical children just don't experience. It's that level of, um, of the, the, the time of the duration, the temper tantrums that go on for hours and hours and hours, or the frequency when 50 times a day your child is lying to you and you wonder if they even have a 
grasp on reality at all anymore. And you start to lose yours, and you start to wonder, and you get depleted, and you start to go where I did, and my husband as well, I can't do this. I cannot do this one more day. One more day, I cannot do this. We had our oldest child who had been sexually abused since the time she was five. We got her at 11. She was 39 pounds when we got her. She was malnourished, she was abused, she was sexually abused, she was physically abused. You name it, it happened. Our other daughter was um, eight when we got her and she was raised as an outcast. There on the islands, there's a, a medical person, <laughs> much different than our own medical doctors here, <laughs> that comes to, a, I probably should say more of a medicine person, that comes to the home when a child is born. And if the child is good, they blow in their ear. I'm sorry, in their mouth. If a child is bad, they blow in their ear. At birth, some person blew in my child's ear. And she was raised as an outcast, as a bad child. She was sexually abused. She was, yeah, excuse me, I get a little emotional about this. <laughs> she was taught that she wasn't even human. When we were going through a lot of therapy with our kids, a lot of therapy, I was holding her one day and she said, you know, mom, before I was adopted, I didn't even know I was a girl. I said, you didn't know you were a girl. What did you think? Did you think you were a boy? No. I said, well, what did you think? I thought maybe I was some kind of an animal. So how do you parent a child with that level of degradation when you have been so unprepared? We were prepared to go into our adoptions, but we weren't prepared for the things that our children brought into our home. How can you be prepared for things you don't even comprehend? And so you start to seek help, and you start to look for people to help you. As I said, I was pretty much at my end. Um, I, I wouldn't necessarily say I was suicidal, but I wanted out. By any means necessary, I wanted out. I just wanted out. And so I called our therapist that we had been working with um, through the Attachment Coalition, Julie Kimball Kubiak, and I said, Julie, we worked with you for years. Our kids are grown. They will not go to therapy, but we are in desperate need. And so she had a couple of other couples at the same time, and we started meeting together best thing in the world when parents can start connecting with other parents and realize you are not alone. That the first slide that we had showed is not the image you have to send and portray to the world out there. You can be real. You can have the support that you need because you need it in order to get through. This is not about treating your child. This is about helping you. You need to be in a place where you can raise a child of trauma. It's unfortunate, but it's very real, as we've noticed, um, as working with parents. This room should be 10 times bigger, maybe 20 times bigger, because there's that many parents out there who have been where, and I've seen heads nod, have been where you are and who have been where we are, and yet they're home today isolated, not understood, and feeling secluded from the people that can help them. And so we have great, great resources in our community. There's great resources out there. But until as parents, we can actually get through the traumas that we're living with, how do we go to the doctors that can help us? How do we go to the therapists that can help us? And so we started looking at the beyond consequences um, approach, the new paradigm that Heather Forb teaches. Um, one of the things here with, with this quote, this, I use this all the time, that if you always do what you've always done, you'll always be where you've already been. I couldn't be there anymore. I had to do something different. I had to look at a new paradigm. And it really is looking at a new paradigm. You're challenged to change yourself. You are challenged to go against the grain. You are challenged to turn your thinking around 180 degrees and, and look at life a little bit different. Your child's and yours. You kind of have to let go of the blueprints with which you were raised. You kind of let go of the conventional wisdom of parenting, the traditional aspects of parenting, and you start to look with a whole new understanding of what's going on here. 
And it's only then that as parents we can really start to make that shift. Um, I'm going to go ahead and advance it one. One more. <laughs> so we started looking at the beyond consequences. And we started understanding what trauma is. This is not something that my child was born with. This is something that happened to my child after they were born. Um, Trauma affects children majorly. It interrupts their development. <clears throat> it impacts their regulatory system, and it makes it difficult for them to function and develop in a, in a sequential, logical way. And so we have to understand that. We have to start to learn to be flexible with our children. So many of us don't want to be because that's not how we were raised. You know, when I was this age, my parents said this, and this is what I did. Well, I see a few heads nodding, and you know that just telling your children what to do and being logical with them does not work. So looking at some of the types of trauma, these are a lot of examples of childhood trauma that occurs to our kids. <coughs> They're not li limited to the ones on the list. And they can range anywhere from mild to severe on the continuum. It can be all over the place. Oftentimes, once we have our children home with us, they're re-traumatized. Sometimes, by taking responsibility for our own actions, we realize we've re-traumatized them ourselves because we just didn't understand what was really going on. And so we start to blame ourselves and start to beat ourselves up a little bit, which isolates us even more. And we need to stop doing that. I'm going to go ahead to the next one. These are the types, the highlighted ones here, are the traumas that our children experienced. Not just one, not just two, but many. And then we wonder how come our kids weren't okay? How come just loving them wasn't enough? How come we just couldn't take them to a therapist and have them fixed? Why couldn't they just be better? Because the trauma affected their development. It affected their brain development. It affected their physical development. It affected everything about who they were. And if we were going to really help our children and get through this, then we had better start to understand what trauma does to a child. Um, most of our kids' trauma occurred also precognitive, preverbal, and are unprocessed expressions of emotion. They can't go into a session of talk therapy and tell you what's wrong because they don't know. They just know that they're scared. And so we start to look at the stress that this creates in our children and the stress it creates in our homes. And so we have to start to understand stress. And within the um, Beyond Consequences paradigm, Heather has devised a stress model. And really, it's nothing new. We all know it. We just don't have labels for it. And so this afternoon, we'll take a look at the stress model and understanding what stress does to the body, what stress does to your child's development, what stress does to you as parents when you're trying to parent your children. We also try work to understand what drives the negative behaviors. We're so focused on the behaviors of our children, especially if they're acting out. We just want it to stop. We just want to be able to walk out the door normally like any other child without any other parent get in the car and go to school. We want them to come home. We would like them just to be able to go to bed at night or come sit down at the table without completely losing it. Um, it doesn't happen without understanding what's going on with your child, looking at them beyond their behaviors. Beyond consequences, control and logic is not about not having consequences. It's one of the biggest misconceptions out there. There are consequences but it's about beyond consequences. It's about beyond controlling your child's behavior. It's about being beyond logic. Because when you have trauma-affected child, it's an irrational action that you have to look at in a different light. So we start to accept what is. That's a hard place for parents to get to. It's one of the hardest things that we've had to work with with parents is truly accepting what's going on with your child. Because part of that acceptance is grieving for what is not going to be. We went into this situation with the ideal of what our family was going to be. And we had to let that go. 
And the, the best advice I got from anybody was our doctor who said, you know, you're not going to have that Walton-esque family that you keep looking for. And I said, I know. And when I started to accept, and my husband started to accept where we were and where our children were, that's when the healing actually started to become a real thing for us. It's when we were actually started to, we were actually started to move forward in our lives. We have a daughter who was removed from our home at the age of 15, placed in Oakland County's Children's Village, and spent the next three years there. Came out not any better. But miraculously, before her 18th birthday, she was rehabilitated, and she was sent back home. And within three weeks, she was on the run again. That's one of the reasons she was there. She was also a cutter. She became involved in drugs and prostitution, but she was rehabilitated. The court systems are full of traumatized children. Our, older, our younger daughter was removed from our home with two assault and battery charges. Aggression beyond belief. We slept with our door closed and locked with our youngest in the room with us. Um, we had the state police come because she was threatening our lives with a knife. Um, she attempted on multiple times to take us out, to kill us. And you live with that. And yet at the same time as a parent, she was the sweetest, sweetest child until you loved her and got too close. And her fear and her threat became so bad that she had to do anything she could do to survive. And our son, when he started to spiral out of control, we knew, that's what, as I said earlier, we knew we couldn't go through this again. There was no way we were going to survive. And so we started implementing Beyond Consequences. It has made a world of difference. We have a son who is functional, who is um, living life on his own. He has joined the National Guard. He loves it. We have a relationship with him, and he functions. We have two girls for who years lived on the streets who were involved in all kinds of other things. We didn't have contact with them for quite a while. But as we've embraced this and we've accepted them for who they are and who we are and understood their trauma and how it affects them, last night we spent the evening with our oldest, picking her up from her job, which she is holding in Farmington Hills while she lives in Detroit. She is taking a bus to get there. And we brought her back to the place she was living. And we had a good hour, hour and a half time with her. We have a relationship with our child because we've embraced this paradigm of understanding our child, their trauma, the stress, and what to do about it. Tomorrow, I'll go down to Detroit and I'll pick up our middle child and she wants to go to church with us tomorrow. And so we'll go and we'll spend the day with her. And we know that we can only do it to the level that she can accept. And that has to be enough. So understanding your child, understanding their trauma and their stress makes the world a difference. Understanding the principles taught and beyond consequences saves your lives. If you truly embrace it and accept where you are, truly accept where your child is, it makes a difference. It heals a home. It heals families. So, yeah, and then you get to start looking at the other parts of life that can help them. So if you'd like to learn more about the Beyond Consequences paradigm, we're going to have a class this afternoon, and we'd love to have you attend with us. One quick point. If Joy had had the clicker down on there, she'd have probably changed the slides a lot easier and a lot quicker without me standing up here. <laughs> The reason I'm standing up here is to make a point. Joy made it right at the beginning. I want to emphasize it again to the dads. Without both spouses on the same page, you are doubling, tripling, however many magnitudes of difficulty in making changes. The biggest difference that we found was when we were both on the same page working together. 
It is so important that both spouses work together, and that's the sole reason today that I've stood up here. For the second session, I'll probably sit down on the, right there, but today I, I really wanted to make the point that dads are just as important. You both need to be on the same page.